Hello everyone, welcome to This Day. It is Wednesday, it is June 12th. I'm Michael Taylor and we welcome you to the midpoint of the shows for this week. Uh, we've got a good one for you today. Let's get right into it. We're going to be talking about cataracts, different kinds of surgeries, whether they're through laser or the old-fashioned way, with Dr. Duna Rauf from Ninvision Eye Centers. And we're going to be welcoming her back to the program as a guest. And then later in the program, we have the Publishing Club. They're going to be here talking about an event they have coming up and a little bit about publishing and the ins and outs of the whole business. So stay tuned for that as well. Right now, we want to tell you about a meeting that's coming up. It is going to be a town hall united. They're going to be holding their uh, monthly town hall meeting. It's going to be this Friday, June 14th at 2 p.m. And they are inviting all United residents to come in for this monthly town hall. And remember, these town halls, they're not an official meeting. You know, they don't do any business. It's really just an opportunity for you as a resident to come in, talk about the things that are maybe are going well, things that you think could use some improvement. And it's really an information gathering thing for the board to get to know what's going on in the community um, and maybe take some action later on down the line. But this is just really an opportunity for them to come meet you and talk about what's going on in your neighborhood. So make sure you get out there. It's going to be the Performing Arts Center, Clubhouse 3, Room 2, 2 p.m. this Friday. Let's take a look outside, and we've got our usual June gloom. I had a little bit of drizzle on the way in this morning. If you're watching the 9 o'clock show, then you know those are the clouds. We have them right now. We are hoping for the usual clearing that we're getting in the afternoons these days. High of 75 today should be nice. We've got the basic 70s, and then Saturday is really going to be our warm day. We're going to have like one little pop of summer at 80 degrees, and we're looking forward to that. And then mostly sunny on Sunday, too, with a high of 75. So it should be really a great weekend to get out there, do some gardening, walk around, do whatever you want. But get outside. It should be nice. Let's take a look at our sunrise and our sunset. And we have a great photo from Maria Gutierrez. She took this one over in Miles Square Park. Sunrise this morning is, was 540. Sunset tonight is going to be 801. If you have a great picture like in Miles Square Park or wherever you get out in and around the neighborhood, you can send it to us. We'd love to see it. Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com is our email address. Please send those photos in and make sure you include your name like Maria did, where you took the photo like Maria did, and we will put it on our sunrise sunset segment. All right, let's take a look at one of the meetings we have for today. And when we come back, we'll be talking about cataract surgeries with Envision. At Adapt to it, we strive to make the everyday tasks easier by providing our customers with the tools they need to be successful. We carefully explain the use and care of all of our equipment. Adapt to it has been in Laguna Woods for over 20 years, and we know that nothing in life stays constant. So we can help you adapt to all the changes in your life. Adapt to it sells and rents items and always delivers with a smile. Come in today to experience what we mean when we say, when you can't change it, adapt to it. The King Living Mid-Year Sale is on now. Five decades of Australian furniture design, crafted for a lifetime of comfort. So why buy ordinary furniture when you can come home to King? Sale on now. Did you ever? The King Living Mid-Year Sale is on now. Save up to 50% on Australian designed, award-winning furniture. So why buy ordinary furniture when you can come home to King? Sale on now. Did you hear the big news? The FDA announced the over-the-counter hearing aid program. It's been six years in the making. And what does that mean to you if you wear hearing aids or if you're thinking about wearing hearing aids for the first time? Most people are asking themselves, what is an over-the-counter hearing aid? Would it work for me? Where do I get them to try? How much do they cost? For over 40 years, Advanced Ear Care has been helping answer questions just like this. Call us today and find out more. And remember, tell them Stuart sent you. Welcome to Envision Eye Centers, conveniently located next to Laguna Woods. We offer cutting edge technology that meets unsurpassed service. You and your eyes are my priority. We will treat you with the utmost care and compassion. Some might offer local exams, but they'll send you on a trek for surgery. Skip the unnecessary travel. You can be confident that we will deliver the best outcome for your eyes. Schedule your consultation today and see the world clearly. Call us or visit our website. No inconvenience, just expert care. Over 
in Vision Eye Centers, it's always a busy time. We're just getting that debrief here real quick. And uh, it's uh, they do cataract surgeries, a lot of good cataract surgeries. And we want to welcome Dr. Duna Rauf to the program. And we were just talking about that. Um, cataract surgeries are not kind of a seasonal thing, right? There's this, there's someone always in need. There's always these times yeah. where you guys are doing surgeries, right? Yeah, absolutely. So cataract surgery is one of those procedures that even though it's considered elective, mm -hmm. um, it serves a major functional need for our patients. Uh, so every time is a busy time for us. <laughs> um, when uh, people feel like their vision is being impacted by the cataracts, uh, then it is the right time to do the surgery. Usually they find that they're having difficulty uh, driving at mm -hmm. night. Uh, right. They feel like they always need extra lights to read. Um, some patients describe it like, my glasses feel like they're always dirty. There's a fog or a film over them. Um, and they come in for a consultation. We confirm that there's cataracts. We do multiple tests, and then we recommend surgery. So uh, really, it can happen anytime. Mm -hmm. uh, for most patients, um, we see that they start developing signs of cataracts in their 50s and 60s. Right. Um, the average age in the US that people get cataract surgery done is 67. With that being said, I've done cataract surgery rarely on people in their late 20s or 30s, really? and okay. then also people in their 80s or 90s. So there's a wide range, mm -hmm. but most commonly it's the 60s and 70s. Now, are those usually health issues that precipitate that, like a diabetes or something yeah. like that, that is yeah. because of the damage it can do to blood vessels in the, in the eye itself? Exactly. So there are some risk factors that are not age-related that can cause cataracts. Uh, one of the most common ones is trauma. Yeah. Uh, so traumatic cataracts can happen when somebody is punch in the eye or hit in the eye in a certain way that okay. causes the lens to become opacified. Um, another reason is medications. So mm -hmm. certain medications have side effects of rapidly developing cataracts. Oh, wow. um, health, other yeah. health issues like diabetes or other ocular surgeries uh, can make the cataracts develop much faster. Okay. And when we talk about that, um, also, do people need a little bit of help around the house after, right immediately after a cataract surgery, like just to make sure you're okay, not going to stumble on something, things yeah. like that? Yeah, so um, with improved technology and cataract surgery, uh, healing time is so much faster, mm -hmm. and it truly is a quick in and out procedure. The procedure takes about five to six minutes. Uh, it's done uh, under twilight anesthesia, so typically the patient is awake, they hear me talking, to them, but mm -hmm. they're in La La Land. Okay. Um, so after the procedure, we ask that somebody has to drive them home, um, and then they're pretty much good and functional. Mm -hmm. I do ask them to take it easy, meaning no vigorous exercise, no uh, bending over the waist, lifting heavy things. Um, I don't want them to drive the first 24 hours because of the anesthesia, okay. but otherwise they're really fully functional and they don't have to have somebody at home helping them. So like you said, there's their new tech, there's the lasers, but let's talk a little bit about the difference there still you still do manual surgeries in terms of cataracts and yeah. we have the lasers way back in the way back machine when I was a young man uh, yeah. you didn't have any of that so yeah. uh, why would someone still need a manual cataract surgery today yeah it's really rare nowadays that we do manual cataract surgery so this was the old traditional way of doing cataract surgery um, it's been around for a very long time and about 15 years ago, the laser was developed. It's a femtosecond laser. Mm -hmm. It's basically a cutting type of laser, and it's very similar to the laser that we use in LASIK surgery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people will confuse LASIK and cataract surgery and LASIK, but we're not really doing LASIK at the time of cataract surgery, but rather just right. using that laser for the cataract surgery. For the actual incision that you're making, you're exactly. getting in there instead of taking the, the scalpel, oh my gosh, the scalpel to the Correct. eye, <laughs> yeah. cringe thinking about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> Um, the laser is incredible in that it does multiple steps of the cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. The incision is certainly one of them. Okay. So the incision can either be made with the laser or it's made with the scalpel or the blade, which was the older traditional way. Okay. The cataract, I like to describe it to patients, um, it's like an M&M, like the candy M&M. Mm -hmm. It's that size and that shape. Oh, okay. And it sits in the front part of the eyeball in a bag. The bag has a very transparent lining, kind of like ceramic. Saran wrap. Mm -hmm. So the surgeon has to access that tiny M&M that's inside the saran wrap in a very delicate way to get the cataract out safely and put the new lens implant in its place. Mm -hmm. So the older traditional way of doing cataract surgery is that you create an opening, we call it the capsulotomy, 
into that bag, the saran wrap, with sharp instruments. Uh, usually we use a needle that's bent or uh, forceps that are, have a sharp ending, and we basically manually open up that circular opening to access that lens. Okay. Um, with the femtosecond laser-assisted cataract surgery, it is an incredibly precise, uh, reproducible, consistent every time, mm -hmm. perfect circle that the laser creates instantly that creates that opening. Okay. Um, the other thing that the laser does is that it softens or breaks up that cataract into tiny pieces. So, so it doesn't have to come out one giant pull or chunk that could actually do yeah. some damage, right? Exactly. So the older way, we used to chop up that tiny M&M with two sharp instruments into a bunch of small fragments mm -hmm. and then evacuate those pieces out. Oh, okay. um, as you can imagine, that causes more inflammation and trauma and swelling within the eye. Mm -hmm. With the laser-assisted cataract surgery, the laser is actually making those cuts. So it's slicing that piece of M&M into a bunch of pizza slices. Mm -hmm. And then the surgeon can go in and evacuate those uh, pieces in a way that causes a lot less inflammation and swelling, all of those things will lead to faster recovery of right. the vision um, and theoretically a reduced rate of complications too. Okay, and, and when the old ways, was there, was there a chance of leaving like little bits sometimes in there as well? Or that, is can it, that can happen. Uh, happen? It's okay. incredibly rare, oh, okay, but that okay. can happen, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, um, when we talk about the decision to either do manual, like you say, it's very yeah. rare, or laser, what are some of the factors that might cause you have to have to do a manual surgery? Um, so um, there really aren't. Um, <laughs> one potential reason would be if somebody has uh, severe glaucoma or problems with their eye pressure, okay. um, that during the laser procedure, we elevate the pressure in the eye mm -hmm. for a very short amount of time okay. while this laser is suctioning on the eye. Um, that can sometimes predispose the patient to a risk for having the pressure be so high for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. It's really rare, but I have sometimes recommended against laser for some of those folks. Oh, okay. um, but really, otherwise, uh, most patients are great candidates for the laser. Mm -hmm. One other thing that I have not mentioned yet that's an advantage of the laser um, is uh, the ability to manage astigmatism. So astigmatism is a word that a lot of people hear about, but mm -hmm. they don't know exactly what it means. It's basically a word that we use to describe how the surface of the eyeball is shaped. Mm -hmm. If the surface of the eye, which is the cornea, is shaped like a perfect basketball, you have zero astigmatism. But if the surface of the eye is shaped a little bit like a football, which is the case with most people's eyes, that's called astigmatism. So prior to cataract surgery, I measure all the internal and external geometry of the eye. We measure the curvature, the diameter, and all of these measurements, including calculating the astigmatism. Um, if we correct the astigmatism during the time of the cataract surgery, we can improve the clarity of the vision wow. afterwards for the patient. And the laser has the ability to do that very precisely. So in addition to all the cuts that I already mentioned that the laser performs, it also can manage astigmatism by creating very precise, partial thickness incisions in the cornea, which is the surface of the eye, um, that will basically give the patient much crisper vision. Now, there's a video I want to play of, a, of a, a cataract surgery, and why don't you kind of walk us through what's going yeah. on here. So here we can see that uh, there's an intraocular lens that's artificial that's being placed in the eye. That's just kind of an overview of what we do in cataract surgery. Um, there are many different platforms of lasers that are used these days. Uh, this is an example of one where basically the laser emits uh, very precise cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives me, as the surgeon, uh, an incredible 3D representation of the eyeball after mm -hmm. it scans the eye with multiple cameras. This is the blade that's used to make the incision. Uh, the blade is very small, but like I said, the laser is incredibly precise. It's a computer-guided laser. Wow. So I actually program um, into the laser how big I want the incision to be how thick, how deep, and where I want it oriented. Mm -hmm. So
so um, the level of consistency and reproducibility that you get with the laser is really unparalleled. Unparall right, this is no way to match what your, your hand can do compared to the laser precision, Correct. right? This is the step where we create an opening into the cataract. So mm -hmm. this is the manual way. We use a couple of sharp instruments to create that circular opening in that saran wrap capsule in order to access the cataract. Uh, versus with the laser, it instantly creates that beautiful, perfectly circular cut every single time. Okay. Then I remove that little opening, um, and we use an instrument that's shaped kind of like a pen to actually remove the fragments mm -hmm. of that cataract that has been chopped up by the laser. Uh, this is the older traditional way where we chop it up with uh, the two sharp instruments. I break it into two halves initially and then into quadrants. Mm -hmm. And then this uh, pen-shaped instrument is a phacal emulsification handpiece. It's basically emulsifying the cataract. Whereas with the laser, it perfectly cuts those four quadrants instantly. And then the surgeon, uh, I, I just go in and evacuate those pieces okay. out. So you just see it's cleaner, uh, right. less inflammation, less swelling, less trauma to the inside of the eye. Um, and that, is it a save time as well? Is it, is it mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah, so that phaco emulsification handpiece, that pen-shaped instrument that's emulsifying the lens, it uses ultrasound energy to emulsify the lens. Oh, wow. And the more ultrasound energy you use, the more swelling you're gonna get in the eye afterwards. And this is the insertion of the lens it's, then afterwards? So the lens is made out of a gummy or flexible material. Okay. So the lens is folded kind of like a little burrito. And <laughs> Insert it like through a contact, that. Like a soft contact lens exactly. almost, right? So there's a very small incision. It's 2.4 millimeters wide. And I insert that intraocular lens that's wrapped up through that tiny incision. Once it's in the correct location inside that capsule in the eye, uh, I inject the lens and it opens up beautifully. I make sure it's well centered. Um, I seal the incision, usually just with injecting a little bit of fluid into it. So it is very rare that I I use stitches during the procedure. Okay. Um, I'll only use a stitch every once in a while if I'm not happy with how the incision is closing. But the incision is self-sealing, uh, heals on its own. It's a really and any lens can be used in that procedure, right? Correct. Okay. So we can do femtosecond laser assisted cataract surgery regardless of what kind of lens implant we use. So I typically tell my patients that there are two uh, decision trees when it comes to their options for cataract surgery. One option, which really is not an option, is laser or knife. Um, it's a no-brainer that the laser has advantages. Um, <laughs> and then the other option has to do with what kind of lens implants they want. And that is something that I do spend a lot of time on with my patients, and that can be a topic of discussion for another time. Uh, just kind of hearing their lifestyle, their activities, their hobbies, whether they want to wear glasses, they don't want to wear glasses, um, so that we can customize the option for the lens implant. But we can do any Sounds kind amazing. of lens implant. Sounds amazing. Dr. Duna Roof from InVision Eye Centers, thank you so much for coming in. That was a really incredible thank video you. and walking us through the difference there. In incredible stuff. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. My Publishing pleasure. Club's up next. Stay with us. Well, at my age, I've seen a lot of things come and go. I served in the military. I've been in law enforcement for a career of 30 years. Recently, I've had pains and aches in my feet that have caused me to dread doing the things I love. I have a friend that told me about Rogue Owner Sports. I was met by a fit expert who walked me through the perfect fit zone. They measured my feet, did a 3D scan, watched how I walked, videotaped it, and showed the results. Turns out, I've been wearing the wrong size shoes for years. Now, with the right insoles and the right shoes, my feet are great. I no longer have the pain in my feet that I had. You know, at my age, oftentimes people ask me how old I am. I'm an old guy, but I gotta tell you, the key is staying active. And you gotta stay active in a pain-free way. With me, it's Roadrunner Sports for my feet.
you suffer from low back pain? Hogue Orthopedic Institute is the number one provider of orthopedic and spine care in Orange County. Our Back to You program is a unique, non-operative, evidence-based approach to treating low back pain. Our spine strengthening program combines physical therapy with education on pain and nutrition. Let Hogue Orthopedic Institute's Back to You program get you back to doing what you love. For more information, visit hoiexperts.com slash spine or call 855-999-4641 to find a doctor. I'm so happy to recommend Dr. Fairman. I've been going to her for nine years. She's done implants, crowns, bridges, root canals, and I've been happy with everything that she's done. The staff is so friendly and pleasant, kind and gentle. I would recommend her to anyone. We are now fully open for all your dental needs and invite you to come in and experience the brilliant smile difference. We are close to gate six near Snooty Fox Restaurant behind Coco's. And welcome back to the program. It's time for Talk to the Publishing Club. They always have something fantastic going on there. Interesting speakers, interesting events, and today is no different. I want to welcome to the program uh, Barbara Torino and Ellie Uzo. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Yes, thank you for having me. <laughs> Uzo. Izzo. 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 <laughs> Izzo. That's a, I <laughs> Uzo's the drink, yes. Yeah. Let's get, let's, we'll, we'll avoid that this early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, let's talk about what you guys have going on, the latest and greatest over at the Publishing Club. Okay, well, this month we have an event called I Am Me First. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an event that I created many years ago. Um, kind of an interesting story. <clears throat> My avocation is acting. <clears throat> and I was doing a show where I had to uh, scream and cry. And uh, Barbara <laughs> doesn't scream and cry. So <laughs> I worked with a coach a little bit uh, trying to get me vulnerable. And he said, I want you to write a story. Uh, the story of Barbara. I want mm -hmm. you to write it, direct it, produce it, star in it, and be the audience. Oh, wow, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me some exercises, and during one of the exercises, I started to cry. And I went and I sat down and I wrote the first I Am Me story. And it was such a wonderful experience for me, and when I shared it with people, they reported um, just an uplifting feeling. So mm -hmm. I realize everybody has a story that has impacted them in some way, physically, emotionally, maybe spiritually. And if we can have a venue for them to write about it and then share it, um, it would be a very cathar cathartic experience for the speaker and a wonderful experience for the audience. So I Me First, why that title? What, what did you want to deliver with that message? Well, when I wrote the story, I said, this is the story of me. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, it's kind of I am me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we could, we could analyze the difference between <laughs> I and me and, and, and all that that went into it. But it just it just felt right, and then um, I am me first is kind of a, you need to to look inside first mm -hmm. and and find out what has impacted your life and how it has affected or changed you, and if you can identify that, be brave enough to write about it and then share it with an audience. It's an amazing experience. Now, Ellie, you've participated in the program yes, as I well. Yeah. What what drew you to the idea and the concept of this? Well, um, I had met Barb. I was uh, blessed enough to uh, work with her as an actor. She was a director of a show, a couple of shows we've done, and she had shared this idea. And uh, after 40 years of being a psychologist, it got my attention immediately because there's something about expressing oneself uh, in a creative way without analysis paralysis, just mm -hmm. sharing. The power of storytelling mm -hmm. is extremely healing in its orientation. So to be able to share some aspect of one's experience, to lean into that, while people in the audience are bearing witness to your story, has a, profound, a profoundly healing effect is on there, the participant. Yeah, is there a catharsis just to being heard sometimes without any feedback? Yes, like sometimes that's all wrapped up in a bow just by itself, nothing else needed. Okay. And this type of um, vehicle offers just that because you could be as creative, you could present your narrative on many different levels and different dimensions, it's up to the participant. And under uh, Barb's incredible guidance, 
you really come out with a story that's respected. You receive compassion and empathy from the, uh, the audience. Mm -hmm. And so its impact is wonderful for everyone involved. Okay. Barbara, we're going to have a slide for the event. I want to put it up on the screen. Tell us a little about where people can go, how we get in there. Yes, it's uh, Wednesday, June 19th, um, Clubhouse 3, Dining Room 2. And anyone is invited to come. Is there, a big, is there a big lineup of folks? How many how many presenters are we going to see? Or just me that day? Just you? Oh, yes. so, oh, so your your yes. own show? Okay, I'm so. going to work with the <laughs> with that group, and I always design the event towards the group. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is the pub club. So these are published authors, right? And so we're going to be talking about their stories as it involved writing the book. Why did they write the book? How did they pick? the story and, and the you're genre. a published author too tell yes. me a little bit about that yes yeah, we have your book covered you'll take a look at well uh, <laughs> as i said i've been acting for 40 years and i realize that a lot of the things that i do on stage can be used in the business environment or in your own life mm -hmm. so i wrote some of those down uh, getting your act together how to use the skills of the thespian in your business or in your personal life mm -hmm. so now, Ali, how do you feel like you've participated in the program, you've yeah. experienced it, mm -hmm. what did you get from it? When you walked away from that, did you say, okay, that, wow, that really gave me this X? Well, you know, I, I, I chose a story that was about some unresolved childhood business that I had, and mm -hmm. I, uh, I used uh, a, an example in my story of having to sit at the table and finish one's dinner. You have to eat your dinner, and you're oh, not goodness. going to move till you finish. <laughs> and so I did a little uh, skit around that, a descriptive thing. It, was, it included uh, pickled beets, which as a child I didn't like. Well, it was very interesting. Once I got it out, everyone listened. They clapped. They understood. The next time I went shopping, I bought some pickled beets. I thought, <laughs> wow, and back in the day, I wouldn't go near it. I wouldn't touch it. So something had shifted for me some sort in of the resolution. telling of that narrative. And wow. it's been such an improvement as far as uh, eating and, and the issues I used to have around food. And you're like, I mean, like you say, you're a professional. You work in this field, yes. but somehow this experience was a whole different approach for you. So much better because if you're a mental health professional and you go in for your traditional therapy, you almost know on the front end what the therapist is going to tell you. It's really <laughs> sometimes difficult to get some benefit. But in this situation, you just, as I said, leaning into your own experience, embracing your own experience, and letting it be, just being in that space, and it really has a very powerful impact on the participant. And much less expensive. <laughs> yeah, much less oh, expensive. Yes. Yeah, that's true. The you price guys are, is right. You guys are only, it's free for members at $5 for yes. gas. That's a pretty good it deal. You can get better than that. So um, your, your presentation, you're, are you excited about it? You're, are you pretty much have it down? You oh, yeah. Ready to go? I'm, always, I'm always excited about it. And the Pub Club is a wonderful group. They uh, are participatory. And uh, I think we're going to have some fun. All right. One more time before we go. Real people telling real stories. I am me first. It's going to be Wednesday, June 19, 2 to 4 p.m., Clubhouse 3, Dining Room 2. Members, like I said, are, fr are free. Guests are $5. Yes. Ellie and Barbara, so much. thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Thank Michael. you so much for having us. That's going to do it for this edition of This Day. We've got to go. I talk too much. Have a great day. Kusa, an adrenaline rush of acrobatics in a zany kingdom of characters. Kusa opens June 8th under the big top at Laguna Hills Mall. Kusa thanks its official partner, Air Canada. Save up to 25% on bookings of 10 or more. Tickets on sale at Cirque du Soleil.com.